JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for October the 14th. I am Haralambos Pisros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It lost uh, some ground only against uh, the Kiwi, while it was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Japanese Yen. The Greenback gained the most uh, ground against uh, the Pound, NOC, the Swiss Franc and the Euro in that order. The strengthening of the US dollar and the Japanese Yen suggests that markets uh, traded in a risk-off fashion yesterday. However, the strengthening of the Kiwi and the weakness in the Swiss franc points uh, point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, a major EU and US indices were a sea of red with a negative morale rolling into the Asian session today as well. Although Japan's Nikkei 225 and Hong Kong's Hang Seng uh, are currently up around 0.10% each, China's Shanghai Composite and South Korea's KOSPI are down 0.52 and 1.05% uh, respectively. Market participants decided to abandon riskier assets and seek shelter in safe havens after Johnson & Johnson said that it had temporarily stopped trials of a potential coronavirus vaccine due to an uh, unexplained illness in a study participant. This has, raised, this has raised concerns that a final vaccine may take longer to be delivered than previously thought. What may have added to investors' uh, nervousness may have been um, negative headlines with regards to, with regards to further fiscal, uh, fiscal stimulus in, uh, in the US. Yesterday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected a 1.8 billion US dollars uh, offer from President Trump, diminishing further the chances of any deal being reached ahead of the November election. As for our view, looking at the charts, we see that the technical picture of uh, most uh, stock indices, especially the US ones, um, remains relatively positive, which means that yesterday's retreat may be an opportunity for some buyers to jump to jump and back into the action. That said, even if we get a rebound in the next days, we remain reluctant to trust a, lo a long-lasting recovery. We repeat that we prefer to take things day by day as there are several, several risks to be considered, including how fast the virus continues to spread, the US elections, and the stalemate in Brexit talks. Now back to the currencies, uh, to the currency world, the Kiwi was the main gainer among the G10s, perhaps due to remarks by RBNZ assistant governor uh, Christian Hockesby. Uh, Christian Hockesby said that some economic data have surprised to the upside, something that reduced the chances for the adoption of uh, negative interest rates by this bank. That said, the prospect, or the prospect is not totally off the table. Hogesby himself said that the discussion of negative rates is not a game of bluff. The main loser was the British pound coming under selling interest due to the little progress being made in trade talks between the EU and the UK. Recent reports have shown that uh, the EU wants more concessions from uh, Britain before entering a last phase of negotiations. And all this comes just a day before the self-imposed deadline to find, uh, to find an anchor. In our view, a deal is unlikely to be sealed tonight and thus in the EU submit, in the EU submit beginning tomorrow, officials are likely to discuss the progress uh, being or not being made until now. 
The pound may stay under selling interest due to the uncertainty surrounding the talks, but we don't expect GBP traders to panic as we see decent chances for the talks to continue even after the self-imposed deadline. After all, EU chief uh, Brexit negotiator uh, Michel Barnier recently suggested that talks could continue up until the end of the month, while another report noted that uh, the EU is preparing for negotiations to last until uh, mid-November. Now, as uh, for today's events, Wednesday is a relatively light day in terms of economic indicators, with the only one worth mentioning being Eurozone's industrial production for August. Expectations are for a slowdown to 0.7% month over month from 4.1%, but this would drive the year over year rate higher to minus 7.1% from minus 7.7%. That said, we will get to hear from five speakers. Those are Fed Vice Chair Richard Clarida. ECB Chief Economist Philip Lane, Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane, Fed Board Governor Randall Quartz, and Bank of Canada and Deputy Governor Timo Timothy Lane. As for tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, Australia's employment report for September is coming out. The unemployment rate is expected to have increased to 7.1% from 6.8%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 35,000 jobs after gaining 111,000 in August. At its latest gathering, the RBA kept its monetary policy settings unchanged, disappointing those looking for further easing after Deputy Governor Guy De Bell flagged the prospect with options including currency market intervention and negative interest rates. That said, a weak, a weak employment report may revive speculation for more stimulus, perhaps at one of the bank's uh, upcoming meetings. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.